Anyway. Put that aside. Grand Finals! Now, Grand Finals between Clone and Google Frog on Isle of Grief. Well, Game 1's on Isle of Grief. There are at least two other games. Possibly three other games. Sorry, at least one other game. Possibly three other games. Oh, and I guess part of it is that Drone doesn't like getting up before noon on a Saturday? I don't want to go World's Smallest Violin on here, but we have different sleep schedules. I'll put it that way. Like, if they have to get up at noon, that's not... they're not like me. I feel weird if I get up later than 8 or 9. 8 or 9 in the morning is sleeping in. I like to get up at 6. And today I got up at 1. But that's because of the tournament. Because of time zones. But I, I'm not complaining about getting up at 1. I'm much more annoyed by getting up later than getting up earlier. I feel like I waste my life if I get up later. And also I feel more tired. Yeah, I'm a morning person. <laughs> in case you didn't notice. So, Grand Finals. Clone and Google Frog. Let's not focus on what happened just now, and instead focus on the main game, so that it's easier for me to split this video up when it comes to splitting it for YouTube, which incidentally will probably happen on Sunday, since I am rather busy today. So yeah. Grand Finals! Clone vs. Google Frog on I Love Grief, which will be starting up... Okay, that's a good break. Welcome back, anyone who's watching on YouTube, to the Grand Finals of the November... The late November 1v10K Tournament for 2015. I normally put... Do I put the year in this? I... Don't. Hmm. Maybe I should. Oh, whatever. I'll have to remember to do that for next time. Anyway. Clone and Google Frog. Clone currently undefeated. Google Frog coming up from loser's bracket. So if Google Frog wins this, we are going on to the Grand Finals 2, or Grand Finals Rematch. I like that name. That was the name that was put in the forum thread. Grand Finals Rematch. If Clone wins, however, it is over. That is tournament. I will probably then just... Well, say goodbye, and thanks for watching. But I won't right now. Don't leave now. We still have a Grand Finals to play. Okay, so now we're starting. So Isle of Grief, this press hasn't come up yet. But it's it hasn't. So Isle of Grief is a map I'm gonna explain once we get into it. Uh let's go. Get the loan. All right, so waiting on clone. Oops. 
So, Grand Finals! Yeah! Grand Finals, November 1v1 Tournament 2015 for Zero K and Google Frog vs. Clone. Google Frog starting in the north side of the map of Isle of Grief. And I really like the Starbucks API. Well done, Sprung. I really like seeing this. It makes the game feel far more cohesive. I love it. Google Frog going for apparently an early Blastwing attack with gunships. Clone going for... I guess... Glaives. I mean, an early Gremlin would be awesome if they went for the Anarchid style of build a starting Gremlin. Rather than a starting Conjurer, like, start with Gremlin, then Conjurer, then Glaives. That would work perfectly. Not happening. Not happening this game. Not at all. Oops. What the? No, this is what I want. Yeah, that's not happening. Instead, what's happening is a Blastwing attack onto Glaives, but otherwise undefended. Although, Clone is going to be going for Solar Plants, which is a better option. Oh, no, they're going for both. And now they're aware of what's happening. And the position they're in right now. They're probably not going to go for Gremlins. It's a little late. I mean, Gremlins would be good. Don't get me wrong. Gremlins would basically destroy all the blast wings on top of this little lake here. But that's not what's going to happen. Because nothing can build right now. Everything's on fire. So game one of the grand finals is going pretty well for Google Frog right now. I mean, they're really pushing what's considered possibly broken strategies. I mean, I don't know if this is broken, but definitely as a rush strategy, it is strong. Going getting the defenders up, they need to get those up as quickly as possible. If anything, they should be... Why is the factor not on low priority? That factor should be on low priority. Is the commander on high? Good. The commander's on high priority, that's good enough. Because the defenders are up. Oh, clone can't see that. Although, admittedly, once that blast wing rises to attack... Actually, it's going to rise up the cliff, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah, as it rises to attack, it'll get hit. Making it relatively harmless. Oh, that defender turnaround time! I think the defender's going to burn to death as a result of that, too. Oh, that is... That is painful. But at the same time, Clone can do this harassment. Google Frog surprisingly not going for an expansion behind this. Not that quickly, going for a jump bot switch instead, letting the caretaker deal with that ultimately, but going for the jump bot switch, not just building much stuff for the caretaker to handle. Clone doesn't have much to harass. Oh, that didn't even work in the defender, unfortunately not doing enough. These cliffs are really useful for letting the blast wings hide. That's the biggest thing that's been working against Clone here. If the defenders were on the edge, it might help, but that's even riskier. But yeah, if they were on the edge of this cliff, I think that would work, because then they could the blast wings couldn't hide. Even if they were hiding, they would still be they would still be spotted. But that involves putting defenders on the cliff. Like they'd have to build like oops. They have to build here or I think here would work fairly well to avoid too much shadow. Like here and here and they are doing it now, actually. Clone is doing that. Doing exactly that, realizing they pretty much have to in order to avoid losing everything because the blast wings can hide. That that's good. They got that idea going. Unfortunately, they didn't really attack during that time, and the caretaker not going for this. Why not? I don't know. Jump out switch slightly delayed for Google Frog. The clone. They're not out of this, actually. They're economically not that far behind. Drone... Sorry, Clone... Pff, drone's not in the game. Google Frog has spent most of their... Has spent the last half hour trying to differentiate between the two. Between Clone and Drone, that is. Google Frog spent a fair... Like, 400 metal on Blast Wings. For landmine purposes now. The jump bot switch finally started... And at this point, just for the constructors, Google Frog has expanded a bit of a stronger economy. And... Oh, that blast wing has been spotted. It's not exploding, it's just... It's just there. It just knows what's happening. And finally, Clone sees it's like, oh yeah, right, I should probably avoid that. Conjure's still on fire, though. Oh no, it's not on fire. Did not light on fire. But, this point, it's, well, into Banshees. 
which is also hard to deal with. And I guess they weren't really expect. I guess no one was not really expecting Air to remain what Google Frog does. But honestly, no one hasn't done much to make Google Frog want to switch. And there's nothing that no one has done that would make Google Frog respect anti air. Because there is no anti air. There's some gremlins coming up now. Which I guess. Okay, it makes sense because now we know. Oh, yeah, there are banshees. Anti air is totally necessary. Rather than anti air might be an overinvestment. Now Clone knows they need it. They definitely need it. Couple gremlins out already. Third one in production. Oh, yeah, that's why I use this selection. Anyway, the gremlins are out, so that is good, but unfortunately, all the glaives, all those glaives dying in enemy territory. And Clone pushing out. They're not giving up. Not anytime soon. Although, yeah, that jump bot isn't much of a switch yet. I guess Google Frog, they must have expected that a bunch of anti-air would have been built, and not enough has been built for them to be afraid of going for air. I mean, the gunships are still very quick. They're still able to go around the map. They still have this large area of the map they can attack from, like, further south from everything. And actually, further south from everything that exists. They've got it all pretty sorted. They don't really have to worry about it. Now they kind of do. With the gremlins in place, they kind of do. But for a long time they didn't, so that works. And nice, Google Frog. They're not going to actually lose this Freaker. They're going to slow down the Glaive, jump away, and run off. But it will slow down their expansion attempts. Oh, not even jump away, just run away. So, yeah, Banshee Rape here in the corner, that's a bit of an issue. At this point, Clone's probably going to be forcing Google Frog away from air, but no, Google Frog going back to Blast Wings. And those Blast Wings are... looks like they used as fleas. Scouting and landmine purposes, not used so much for direct assault, which makes sense. But now the jump bot switch is basically complete. Six Pyros coming down here. Now the question is, are they going to go for a jump? I don't think you can jump into water anymore. I might still be able to. Used to be, I think you still can. You could jump out of water, like jump into and out of water. So with two jumps, the pyro could go from any area here through the water into the main base. So right now, Clone is, I think, doing not terribly, but the edge, edge defenders, completely drained by the, by those banshees. That was such a great play there by Google Frog. As the thing about defenders, they they only have so many missiles. Follow with a pyro, very clever. Like that's, I mean, okay, very clever. <laughs> it's okay. I'm over. I'm, I'm playing it up a bit, but still. The Banshee to Blastwing follow-up was super clever. The Pyro follow-up was natural. I mean, they were building up to that, but that Banshee to Blastwing follow-up was... That was perfect. That's exactly what they needed to do. That's the sort of tactical play that really makes you win this game. That was game one, which basically was just... Clone didn't set up defenders on the edges and didn't have... Didn't have much, as much economically. Was basically Google Frog just over overwhelmed them at first. Overloaded them is what I wanted to say. Overwhelmed them at first, and that was pretty short. Moving on to whatever map clone chooses, which will probably be Comic Catcher. Okay, well, moving on once it gets chosen.
and clone not really picky, just mapping. Just okay, Moon Q10X. I I don't think I've ever seen this in a tournament. Probably going to be corrected on that one. But if I have, it's almost been never. Oh, it's still on. Yeah, it's Moon to Ken Q10X. Really? Okay. I mean, that's not a terrible. Oh. Okay. That. Never mind. They're still picking. My mistake. It's not Moon Q10X. I don't know what it is yet. I guess it's hide and seek. That works better. Oops. Really, that I that would have been weird. For one thing, Moon Q10X is highly asymmetric, and a lot of there was actually a bit of a comment there that it shouldn't even be featured, and I agree. But anyway, Moon Q10X is... Or... They're starting out. Clone in the southwest, going for Click about Factory. Google Frog in the northeast, not yet chosen their factory. Neither player really focused on this plus 2.4. I guess they don't play on Hide and Seek too often. I'm fairly certain at least one of them plays with the Econ View on. Hope they would anyway. Super handy. And Google Frog going for Quick Spider, which makes sense. This map does support Spider decently well. Force Colloquio KVS, yeah, Spider is good. I, I would go for Spider on this map, but then I like Spider Factory. I'm going to bias towards that because I like the factory. I realize it's a bit broken. Well, not broken. It's considered a bit of a handicap. But it's... It is a powerful factory on this map, and I just like it. I enjoy playing the F Spider Factory, so Google Frog going for pretty standard. Flea for Scout, and then Venom for support start. This map really supports having crabs on this upper area, especially here and here, and supports Recluses everywhere, but generally you're going to see a lot of Venom Redback or Venom Hermit early on. And that's what Google Frog is probably going to go for. Venom something. Venom Hermit, I think, is more in vogue. But Venom Redback is... Also good, and against a Cloaky Bot opponent is not unlikely. At this point, Clone slightly ahead economically, building up that Metal Extractor at the 2.4 spot a bit sooner. Google Frog just about finishing that, so Google Frog a bit behind economically, both energy and metal. But at this point, it's still basically where a single battle is going to be not a huge deal, unless it leads into winning, which it probably won't. This map's large enough that that doesn't tend to happen. On the other hand, the battles that will happen, it's close enough, it's, it is going to kind of go with that. Like, whoever wins that battle is going to have an advantage. And the first battle about to happen right now, I mean, it's just a Glaive versus a Flea, so that's, the Flea is going to lose, the Glaive will, if it, oh, yeah, the, just barely. Thought it got over the hill in time. It did not. Oh, nice harassment opportunity for Clone, though. The defender is... Is almost reloaded? Ah, oh, it hasn't reloaded yet. And actually, that's... Not... Is it gonna work? That... That's down. That metal extractor is going down. A good harassment on Google Frog... Oh, sorry, on Clone's part. Google Frog's still in a fairly strong position, though. They didn't lose that much as a result, so both players are fairly even. Clone, however, expanding to the back fairly quite quickly, faster than Google Frog is. Again, they're coming up a lot faster than Google Frog is. Google Frog looks like they're trying to set up their map hack, setting up the fleas just for scouting, but they are going to run into a lot of glaives. This. Hmm. This is really hard to judge right now. Because basically, a bad position with these glaives for clone, and they lose all of their glaives. 
But the fleas aren't going to do much. Like, fleas are so weak that glaives are riot are as riots to them. Okay, I think Google Frog's got them. Yeah. Well, the Venom's there. It doesn't, I wouldn't say necessarily got them. Discouraged slightly, maybe, but not exactly got them. I spoke too soon. And finally managed to get rid of them, but that glaive five times cost already? Sheesh. Or not quite. That part has been fixed in the next version, but not quite in this one. The next version will probably be made stable after this tournament, though. Typically, if there's an older version and new versions have been made, they aren't stabled until... If the tournament's about to happen, they aren't stable until the tournament happens, because that would just be mean. <laughs> Changing versions before a tournament happens is typically frowned upon. For good reason. The players were practicing on the old version. Why did you mess it up? Right before the tournament. And now, an opening for Google Frog's counterattack with fleas. Because all those glaives died and the ones that didn't are out of position. Oh, this flea. This is the really important flea here. Because right now, Clone has switched the economy of Google Frog. And if these fleas can do their job properly, that will be massively reduced. Gotta be careful. That Ooh, that lotus. I mean, there was no real chance for that flea, but still. Didn't see the lotus coming. But hey, that's a very low-cost solution to scouting it out. I don't think Google Frog regrets that. They know that it's there. Venom's, on the other hand, not so low cost. Good solution for the radar. Oh, didn't see the radar! Oh, that is painful. Google Frog did not see the radar, because killing that radar would have been helpful. Not necessarily hugely so, because the radar shadow basically makes its front-facing capabilities useless. Like, it, it's over here. It can't see anything on the other side of the rock. But it's... Still there. Still kind of a pain. Anyway, with attack coming in here, this Lotus is not enough to... Oh, well, it wouldn't be enough if all the Glaives came in together, but unfortunately Clone let them come in one at a time and is forced to retreat. Google Frog looks like they're starting to stabilize. They're still behind economically, but they are getting the southeast, or sorry, the northeast side of the map. They do need to get this area over here. That is their main base. They need to get their main base back. Pushing forward their commander again. At this point, Clone should be switching over to Rocco's. If not, if they haven't already. Nope, they just started switching over. And that's exactly what they needed to do with all the Venoms in play. It's been pure... Well, Venom Hermit now. So I answered that earlier question. It's Venom Hermit. There is a red back just in case, but primarily Venom Hermit, which is what I kind of expected. Like I said, it's kind of in vogue. And in comes Google Frog's main attack. This is pretty much it. If Google Frog loses this attack, they have nothing to fall back on and no easy way to rebuild their army. So they have to be super careful with this. If they make it, there's only two rock. Oh, sorry, there's four Rockos. Oh, that's bad. The Hermits are going to be handy for tanking the Rocco shots, but there aren't many Rockos. There aren't a lot of stack defenses either. Clone has a couple defenders, a couple Lotuses. Nothing huge. But Google Frog doesn't really know at this point where to attack. They have some idea. But not the best, clearest idea that they could have. Fortunately, those glaives ran forward, but now at this point, it's just the Rockos to deal with, and the Rockos are going to be a problem. And that... Is that going to work? I don't know. I think the... I think the Vems may have already taken it. Oh, boy. Yeah, the Venoms and Hermits coming in here, and the Hermits are still actually dealing a fair amount of damage. Clone forced to retreat somewhat, so it's actually giving Google Frog a fair amount of room to rebuild, but they aren't building any Weavers. Oh, the only Weaver they have is over here in the Northeast, not doing anything. And Google Frog is... Well, not forced to retreat, but 
I'm still kind of surprised they aren't building up more economy. They're in a position where they kind of need to, and really can. Please give me a frick. Okay, this is what they need. The extra scouting helps with the Rockos too, but the main benefit of that is going to have been that they know what's around. They know what they're dealing with. But yeah, that also works with the Rockos. That does get rid of the Rockos quite effectively. Ooh, man, that mech's, that mech's death burst. That's always painful. And now Google Frog has rebuilt their economy, just needs to get their production on the way. But they got that going too, so they are good. And the Air Factory looks like it's been cancelled for Clone. They did have one queued up, but they've cancelled it at this point, sending up just caretakers to use up their economy. Building up more cloak units will be handy, but at this point, Google Frog's basically back, not quite back in the game yet, they're still behind economically. They still need to take a bunch more of this territory. So in a minute or two, they'll be back in the game. They win a battle, they will be even. If they get their economy going and win a fight, like decisively win a battle, they will even out this game. But that's going to be tricky, and Clone with a lot of defenses over in the southeast side of the map. Not as much in the northwest, but northwest, but a lot in the southeast. In the northwest actually getting taken pretty quickly. The Rocco's being, well, uh, they continue to be a pain to the butt. There should be, f oh, there are no fleas in the way? Well, then, never mind. There are no fleas in the way. There are a few on the map, but there's only three, and they're basically being used for scouting around the map. Yeah, that's it. But this is where spiders become handy, going on the hills and making it very difficult for anything to follow. And, of course, EMP. EMP's always handy. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I really like having spiders, is the hills. And, once again, we continue along here as everything just gets rid of this. This northwest side is basically Google Frog. Like, Google Frog can take the entire north side now. Basically all theirs. I don't know if they're going to do that. And they have a decent amount of work with, but I don't know that they're actually going to take advantage of that, just because, well... They haven't really been building... Okay, they're building more now, so they do have a few weavers around the back. They just haven't been building in the back as much as Clone has. But they're also not in a position where I'd say that having lost some of their units has been the biggest deal. It's still a problem, and we still now have the Air Factory built up for Clone one way or the other. Like, it's not over yet. It's far from over. But Google Frog now does have economic parity. So they've got the economic parity, so the advantage is nullified for economy. There is still a military advantage for Clone, which needs to be nullified by fighting it out. And if that gets dealt with, then Google Frog should have a decent advantage, actually. Google Frog also taking up the southeast, just trying to do what they can to get rid of Clone's economic advantage to make their military advantage easier to, to secure. Because if, if Clone loses their economic advantage, then it won't take long for Google Frog to just build into a military advantage rather than having to fight for one. And at this point, they don't have to fight through much. But Google Frog's still behind economically, building up what they can, where they can. And, oh, Google Frog also going for Air Factory. I missed that. I'm sorry. So Clone's an Air Factory and a Light Vehicle Factory. Oh, Proxy Light Vehicle Factory. Wow. I mean, this map does not support light vehicles very well, but proxied right there, yeah, that's actually extremely painful. There's this giant alleyway that's going to be destroyed. Google Frog now aware of it. But with no real units to deal with it. I haven't got much to work with to get rid of these Scorches right now. Okay, except I was say they could get some them Phoenixes, and that's what they're going to have to do. Or at least they're going to do that. don't have to. But they will. Enough Swiss would also do the trick, but yeah, powering Phoenixes quickly as possible. Get those get those into the scorches as fast as they can. And that will probably finish things up. So at this point, Clone's still ahead though. This is still dangerous. The Fleas are doing a great job stopping the Rockos, but the Rockos are still making cost. Well, not quite making cost, but they're, they're opening territory. Not making cost, but they are opening up territory and those Scorchers are still pouring through. 
And the Phoenixes haven't done much yet. So it's... It's kind of iffy. The Phoenixes haven't done a lot. If anything, I don't think they actually have done anything for... For Google Frog. Google Frog's earlier attacks are basically done right now. Now it's the front of, frontal assault, but Google Frog did manage to restabilize. So now it's just fighting for military advantage and economic parity. Much better situation than being disadvantaged in all ways and having to win off basically slight luck and tactics alone. But Google Frog, I'd still say, is behind. Nowhere near as far behind, but they're still behind. They're militarily behind, their territory is behind. Their economy's on par, sort of, but not always. And now, tactically, they're running into issues as well. Crab coming in to try to help push that assault. It works well on this map, but it's a bit tricky to set up just because where it works is on here, and there's not a lot that's of interest near that giant ridge in the center. Ah, nice defender. Defenders on cliffs to help get rid of the hawks. I don't really get rid of many of them, though. Got rid of, like, one, and Google Frog throws in the towel. Very nice attempt to get back in. I say the Google Frog stabilized, and then Clone just managed to take a bit more of an advantage, and that sealed the deal. I think it really did, came down, did come down to that attack here. Did a lot of damage, but not enough. It, it got shut down before it could wipe out enough to really cripple Clone. It was enough to get Google Frog stabilized economically, but not enough to get them stabilized militarily. That's game one, game two... Sorry, that was game two. We're one and one. We're moving on to game three. I should look at the scoreboard more often. So that was game two. Just look at the thing at the bottom. That that That's correct. And it looks like we're going to be playing on Cooper Hill. Possibly the last game of this tournament. Possibly just... The last game of this section. If, Go if Google Frog wins, we are going on to the second Grand Finals. The Grand Finals rematch. Oh, I see. Apparently Google Frog has some multitasking problems. So we're moving on to game three. Cooper Hill starting up and wait what? Ah, okay. Someone came in and did not properly get specced. I mean, what? It's not sorry, I could have mentioned there's something about shouldn't be allowed and maybe they're still talking about the map? Or talking about hide and seek, I'm not totally sure. I think they're being sarcastic. Anyway. Doesn't really matter. What matters is Game 3 of Grand Finals, possibly Grand Finals 1, depending on how this game goes, on Cooper Hill. So for those of you not familiar, this is the Reclaim map. This is the Reclaim map to end all Reclaim maps. This is just Reclaim everywhere. Everyone starts out with about... Usually this is 90. So everyone starts out with about five or 600 medal of Reclaim just in their opening area, and a good 2,000 in their main base. Areas that they have easy control over. There isn't obviously much in the way of static economy, but yeah, it's like 2,000 in the areas that Google Frog easily controls. Same with Clone. It's actually a bit less for Clone. I don't think of it. Yeah, that side's more for static economy. It is mildly asymmetric. Google Frog going for very quick dirt bags. Clone going for a jump bot factory start. I think Google Frog is going to be having. A bit of an easier time here. Starting with, with dirtbags is fairly smart, I'd say. But dirtbags can't really stop jump for too long. And Jack coming in for clone because this is a small map. This is a knife fight map. Melee units are not that bad. Cheap melee... Okay, Jack's not cheap. But melee units are not that bad. I'll just get some sound here. Yeah, melee units aren't that bad. They're definitely worth having. And really, it's just more for scouting than anything else. What, 30 metal each? Yeah, that's nothing.
these dirtbags are doing a pretty decent job of making sure that Google Frog knows exactly what Clone's up to. Which is all Google Frog needs to know. Because, yeah, with a jack coming in, that's going to take a while to build. But the way the economy is, that is going to take a while. But I don't expect Google Frog to be too worried about that. I'm figuring that Google Frog's thinking, well, I shouldn't worry about that. I should just build up my economy, build up my reclaim force, and then get the outlaw to slow the jack down so I can destroy it with bandits, thugs, whatever. Anything else. Clone, on the other hand, still building up that jack. That jack's got 12 seconds left. So the jack's almost done, but Google Frog has a nice early warning system for that with the dirtbags. Two outlaws, no, no indication what their further plans will be. Clone with another jack coming up on top of that first one. Google Frog is just building outlaws. Okay. Well, I guess that isn't a terrible idea. It does slow these things down. It just doesn't deal a huge amount of damage on its own. I really don't know what their follow-up force is planned to be. That's just... I just... I find it weird. Like, are they going to use thugs? Are they going to use bandits? Are they going to use felons? I mean, not felons. Are they going to use rogues? I don't... They wouldn't use felons. You don't use felons against jacks. Rogues, yes. Rogues could work. Unless it's just mass outlaw. The Google Frog is gambling their ability to win this tournament on finding out what's going on with the game. That sounds like Google Frog. Google Frog is one to gamble their... Okay, they are building bandits. But they are one to gamble winning on learning. Like, they're one to... Well, if they can learn something and it causes them to lose, that's better than winning but not understanding... Or not getting a better understanding of what's going on. But... We'll see. I mean, like I said, the Jacks are known, and bandits are the follow-up force. Well, the outlaws will be able to slow them down like mad. <sighs> so, outlaw, moment of truth, or not, because the jack's retreating. Almost moment of truth. Not quite. Almost. Oh, wow, it's enough to camera shake. Sheesh. So at this point, it's basically just Jack versus Outlaw. Building it up, neither player particularly confident. Oh, nice roach setup! Aw. Oh, going for the commander with that roach, I'm sure. 1,200 damage. Two of those would have killed the commander. But at least I saw what's happening in the center with that roach. But still, that was... That would have been something powerful. Mind you, it still did a fair amount of damage to the Jack. But I don't think that's what they were going for. And this is where the Stardust... So people are... I was talking about the Stardust nerf beforehand. And mentioning that the Stardust can only shoot down 30 degrees since version, I think, 1.3.11. And that 30 degrees seemed like nothing. But it turns out that on a hill like this, up on a raised platform, Stardust is actually pretty bad. It's, there's a massive blind spot. It just cannot hit. It's not visible, but there is a massive blind spot. Not that it matters anymore. I mean, having been stunned out, but still, that 30 degree blind spot, I wasn't sure how effective it would be. It turns out it's actually a big deal. I don't want to do much in the north, but... These outlaws. Outlaw banded pair just causing problems. Now the racketeer support, it's making it difficult for Clone to actually break through this. And the jacks aren't quite enough, because the problem is the jacks cannot get in without being slowed to a crawl. And the jacks are slow as it is. They get slowed to a crawl on top of that. With the support forces that that Google Frog has. I mean it's not much with three bandits, but still. They get slowed to a crawl. They basically get kited permanently. That's the problem. We just saw it right there. They get kited forever. They can jump in. 
But they can't easily walk in then jump. But they have to. Which is basically the crux of the problem. And clone, what are they doing? They're getting up more jacks, I guess. Anything can win with numbers. I don't know. The outlaws are good anti-crowd or good crowd control forces. Kind of weird. The outlaws go out of sync like that. You notice that Google Frog has been turning them off and on so that they sync up their pulses, and they get out of sync. And there we go, that's the walk and jump in. Which is the thing that becomes a problem for the jacks. A like, problem when fighting the jacks, I should say. Because those jacks actually did a lot of damage. And the outlaws did not do enough to deal with that, and clone with a nice Faraday. At this point, yeah, it's pretty pretty solid position. Something's pretty solid position for Google Frog, but not the best position. But that racketeer, man, that racketeer has been saving Google Frog so much. I mean, now getting to the Faraday before getting rid of the... Yeah, it got rid of the Stardust before, now it's getting rid of the Faraday. Unfortunately, there's not... If there were some rogues, I think this works extremely well. And the bandits that are there are good. They're helpful to have, but still, if there were rogues... The kiting would be even stronger. Or just extra follow-up forces. The kiting would be that much stronger. But it's still working pretty well. That that was basically clone throwing the game. I mean, all those jacks were pretty necessary to have clone not die. Like, clone has... I wouldn't necessarily say lost. But winning at this point is going to be difficult. They are... They have the economic advantage, that's true. Google Frog actually really hasn't been building up a lot of metal extractors. They're kind of discounting the plus ones. Don't blame them, but at the same time, Clone is ahead economically as a result of not discounting the plus ones. So it's not nothing. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's certainly not nothing. Ragatir focusing on Metal Defenders, which I wouldn't necessarily say are the wrong forces, but it's a bit different. And it looks like we have shielded outlaws coming here. Convict supported outlaws. Oh! Nice scuttle! Except it didn't actually kill anything. It made a pretty explosion, but I don't think it actually killed anything. Maybe one or two outlaws. Oh wait, no, that, that was a that must have been a buried scuttle. Never mind. That was a skull that was just killed by the outlaws. So yeah, okay. Good that there was. It's nice that there was a scuttle. I was entirely wrong there. That was. Yeah, that scuttle didn't do anything. It's like, Look, a fancy explosion. That did nothing. But it looked cool. It's what it did. It was a cinematic explosion out of nowhere. That. That scuttle just gave its life to look cool. Must have just come out of high school or something. Anyway. At this point, Google Frog really should probably be expanding more in the back here. Just for the sake of having the stronger economy overall. Granted, their production isn't really following it, but still. Have the stronger economy, make it work better. Thug Law follow-up, which makes sense. Jacks are still pouring out, though. Clone's well, trying to do what they can when it comes to their defenses. Like, whatever they can, but... Thug Law is going to be able to tank well enough that the Outlaws can get in. Wipe out the defenses. The Outlaws can destroy defenders, no problem. Especially five of them. And the Thug Shields will be no problem whatsoever to deal with that. Like, that'll tank the defenders. The Outlaws will go in and destroy the defenders. And then there's not much in the way. Why are the Outlaws not moving forward with the Thugs? What's going on? I mean, okay, I guess the thugs do tank the shields, which is still good. I mean, that's what you want. But they don't exactly kite jacked especially well. I 
Actually, well, yeah, Lordy pointing out the Fireworker would be handy. I would argue it's more handy for Google Frog. If Google Frog did a jump bot switch and added a Firewalker in and just tore apart all these defenders, that would work. Yeah, Lordy pointing out for either side. Yes, that's very true. Although I still argue it's much more for Google Frog than it is for Lo for Clone. But man, these jacks. Maybe actually it would be good for Google. No, for Google Frog is always good. Maybe it would be good for Clone just just to get rid of the outlaws. Because that's stopping the jacks from doing much. They're not making it impossible. And the Jack has nowhere to rest on there. Took the full brunt of that Stardust. Died for it. That was, that was kind of cool. So we see what happens when something is right up to a Stardust. Takes loads of damage. What's the Stardust DPS anyway? Oh, 375 DPS. Yeah, no kidding. The only saving grace is its inaccuracy, but not in that case. Not when you're literally on top of it. At that point, it can hit you with every single round. Sheesh, this is... This is kind of tense, but... It does feel like one unit... Okay, the Felon, there's that one unit. I was gonna say, it feels like one unit would do it, but the Felon's actually not that great of an option. I would go with Rogues, personally. I mean, you want something that can kite the Jacks and get rid of them as they run away. Which Rogues do. The Felons, on the other hand, just drain all the shields into the Jack. And how many Jacks? It's like five Jacks? Six Jacks? Seven Jacks! Yeah, 35,000 health worth of jacks. When this steals... I'm not sure how much it drains to deal 75 HP worth of damage. Oh, drain 75 HP per shot. Each shot is 108 damage. So, it doesn't have much. Like I said, it just... That was a waste. It's going to drain the entire shield ball shield into the jacks, and that's not going to do much. I'm surprised Google Frog didn't go for the rogues. Like, Google Frog does have to win this if they want to stay in. If they don't want to get silver, they have to win this match. It's their only chance. And the Stardust now getting its free hits in. Goes down, but still got a lot of free hits in. Getting rid of those jacks. At least three of them go down. Sheesh, possibly four. Possibly even five. One of them slowed down to the point that the thugs can basically tear it apart. This one over here. Slowed down to the point that the thugs can basically tear it apart. And... There are rogues! Yeah! Rogues are being built. There we go. It's exactly what Google Frog needs. But after those jacks were destroyed by the Stardust, I think this is where Google Frog can go over the... No, it can't quite. Okay. If they get rid of these last few jacks, that really helped getting rid of the jacks of the Stardust. If that sacrifice of the Stardust was totally worth it. I think Stardust is like half the cost of a jack anyway. Oh, a third of the cost of the jack. Yeah, that was totally worth it. I killed two jacks with the... Well, I killed a jack with the death explosion and another one just with the bullets. Like, Google Frog. It's just the economy. That's the only thing. Clone's staying alive because they have a bunch of reclaim to work with. They have a super strong economy to work with. And Google Frog is not taking advantage of the reclaim they have. Google Frog must be really tired right now. I think for Google Frog, it's about 10 p.m., 10 or 11 p.m. They've got to be bagged. I mean, they have had a chance to rest, but they they were playing quite a bit in the loser's bracket. Or the lower bracket. They were playing a lot. So... They're tired. And Google Frog is reclaiming. So, at least they're not... They're not a point there, but... Yeah, that's still... I'm still surprised they aren't going for more expansions. Even on a reclaim heavy map like this one. And unfortunately, those rock, those rogues... Not rockers. Rogues not either on attack move, nor are they being moved back when they need to be. Google Frog not kiting when they need to. And one outlaw is just not enough here. I'm starting to think Google Frog might be slipping. They get another couple builders, push more production, possibly add another factory with what they have, and get more power as well. If they got a Firewalker on top of this, that would work really well. Or they just got more production in there. Really push that, but... They don't. They have a lot of Reclaim to work with too, but yeah, they don't have that. Why are they building a whole... Oh! Okay, maybe, are they going for a Proxy Factory? 
I'm going for Proxy Caretaker. I mean, the reclaim is a reason for that, I suppose. On its own. Okay, that's why they're doing it. They want the reclaim. An easily protected reclaim. Are they going to go for another factory? That's what I want to know. Are they going to go for the jump out factory? Are they going to go for air factory? For napalm bombers? Or for... I guess that'd be the main thing to use it for. Well, at this point... Kind of open territory of getting attacked, and this... Yeah, Sprung, I think, is right. It's probably game. Google Frog going for a counter-assault, but this is not going to be easy. Not even sure if it's possible at this point. These powers coming in here... Clone probably a bit surprised that Google Frog has not expanded their static economy at all outside of the main base. And... Wait... Oh, right, yeah, Lotuses, that's that's enough. Google Frog with the Clutch Lotuses. That works. Jack, or Pyros, rather, do not beat Lotuses. One-on-one, -on -one, a Lotus will slightly beat a Pyro. Oh, no, sorry. Pyro will slightly beat Lotuses. One-on-one, -on -one, Pyro will beat a Lotus with, like, 5% of its health left. Two Lotuses or three Lotuses, not gonna happen. And once again, the Stardust getting attacked might kill... Yeah, it's probably gonna kill itself to destroy the... Well, it'll die destroying the Jacks. Google Frog's commander digging itself into a hole. This is going to be jumped into. These pyros, oh! See, the painful part about this is that the pyros hadn't jumped into it, so the the commander death burst didn't actually stop the pyros from being alive. Didn't kill them, and that pretty much sealed the deal. I think if Google Frog had gone for rogues sooner. That would have done it. They'd gone to Rogue sooner, had that kiting ability, and been able to just deal with the jacks as they were running away, as well as when they were attacking, it would have been it. But that's how it went down. So Clone wins, gets the tournament win 2 1 against Google Frog in the grand finals. So only one grand finals. Oh well. So that is that. We have Clone getting first place, Google Frog getting second place, and Drone getting third place, I think, and Anarchid getting possibly fourth place. I'm not entirely sure it's going to work with Drone having left in the winner's finals, but everyone has a right to forfeit, so I say Drone gets third place. Because they did win up to that point, and they chose to forfeit. That is well within their rights. They are allowed to forfeit. So, well done, Clone, Google Frog, Drone, and thank you all of you for playing. All of you showed up to play. Thank you all for playing. And that's it. November 1v1 tournament is over. Clone wins. Google Frog gets second place. Drone gets third place. And we're getting fourth. And that will close this out. So thank you for watching. I kind of want this updated before I leave. But I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah, I will have these casts up on YouTube. On I'll be cutting them up to put them on YouTube on Sunday. So they're not going to be up until tomorrow at the earliest. And then that will be that. So thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. And that was a overall fairly good tournament. Good turnout. I like the turnout. Glad to see a lot of old vets come to play and good to see some new players too coming in here. I do like seeing new players playing tournaments. It's just seeing new players play tournaments means you have new blood in there, and it just makes it fresher. And it also, it's good to know that there is a growing, or at least lively, somewhat community. There is, there a community exists. That's always good. But that is going to be it for me. For this tournament, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Aquanim, for taking over hosting duties. Thanks to all the players for joining and playing, and... Thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.